Uh, welcome back to another episode of Tech I Want. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a product that is going to revolutionize the world of dick pics. We're going to be looking at the RevoPoint POP2, the precise 3D scanner with 0.1 millimeter accuracy. Scan the reality into the 3D digital world. Yeah, and this is, I'm Daniel, Rafi, and we're back with another one of these crowdfunding campaign reviews. So we don't have the product with us in the studio, but we want to show you a little behind the scenes of how we choose our campaigns, how we choose what to back, how we choose what to review. And we do that by looking at the video, looking at the campaign page, looking at the updates, the comments, see how people engage with them, see how open and forthright the campaigners are with their uh, subscribers, backers. So yeah, this is the Revo Point Pop Two. Revo Point, Revo Point. Yeah, good question. I was I was calling it the Revo Point, as in Revolve Revolution. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. You think it's the Revo? Well, my British upbringing, yeah, it brings me Revolve. It revolves. So I don't know. And then what about the Pop? What's that about? Daddy issues? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> P.O.P.? Would you call it a P.O.P. I too? I think it is a P.O.P., but I don't know what the initial stands for. Point of purchase. <laughs> Point of perspective. So yeah, do we want to watch the video or do we want to... Okay, so they've raised $1.1 million on Kickstarter already. They have 36 days to go. That's almost 2,500 backers. So it's going pretty well. Um, this is at the time of recording. Probably by the time this goes live, it'll be about 20 days to go. And they might have already crossed the two million mark. Who knows? Yeah, Who knows? yeah. This looks like a very interesting product. A very with with a huge following behind it. If once I do a little bit of uh, research and go into the different videos, uh, a lot of people love the first iteration. This is the Pop Two, so it you know it suggested there's a, this is the second iteration. The first one people loved. It was great success. And with the second one, it sounds like they're just improving on what was already working and already had a great following. Which is crazy because I feel like this is a really niche product, no? Like how much 3D scanning would you get up to if you had a 3D scanner? Like what, what are you scanning? You, they, they market it towards 3D digital artists, 3D people who are printing things. But a lot of the videos, we'll, we'll get to these, a lot of the videos seem to be very professional uses you know so yeah. somebody's scanning car parts i'm yeah. not entirely sure for what they're scanning car parts with a tiny little 3d scanner but but yeah let's find out let's explore let's hit play last yeah. year so let's check out the video the rebel point pop 3d scanner and when we showed it on kickstarter you liked it we had more than ten thousand. i like how they're emphasizing the that you liked it <laughs> yeah and now it's time make to no it. mistake you better remember that you liked it okay you said this to 3D scanner. We're using a new generation of microstructured light technology sensors. The has cool. been optimized and the microstructured light is technology now up to 0 sensors. 0.1 millimeters. I wish we had that the tripod here. The 3D scanner supports shape, mark, no, he man is. feature alignment. It's a cartoon with intelligent From the 80s and data collection. Yeah, late 80s early 90s. Accuracy I think they read they redid it with yeah. Kevin Smith. Okay. Okay. That's the guy you like from it is designed What's with that movie? Docking. Clockers or no? Is it clockers? No. It supports USB charging. Mall rats. Uh, clerks. Clerks. Thank you. Yeah. We have brand new accessories including lightweight turntables. It's very neat. Just one it, this is incredible. It scanning automatically. The Revel Point Pop 2 scans at 10 frames per second, measuring 3 million data points. The internal process. Yeah, see, this is a long video. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back after this break. <laughs> It is long. It's three minutes, but yeah, it feels super long. That's He-Man right there, but he had a haircut. He-Man, you said a haircut. This? Like, they put it on the table? That's He-Man? Okay, so look, that's on the table, but it's actually moving with the shot. Yeah. So the AR was with the camera filming. Your imagination will become reality. This new technology also Aww, allows you to scan a perfect 3D model. Is that what was in his ears? Them this, this guy, I, this guy scares me because he's a super genius playing with ears. You know, like 95 grams. You can easily use it for a long time without getting tired, and you can take it anywhere you yeah. want to go. Okay. <clears throat> so, so that was the video, the Revo Point. Revo Point. Yeah, he said it. Revo Point yeah. Pop Two. 
But that's the voiceover artist. Who knows? Maybe, you know, that was his creative decision. Could have been. Could have been. They gave him far too much freedom. Yeah. They should have reined him in. Well, he was an American. Maybe if he was British, he'd have gone with a Regal punk as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty, it was, again, high production video, you know? Uh, this was a high-end video for him. Very much compared so. Compared to at least the center cam that we wanted. Very much so. This had multiple scenes. It wasn't just uh, one dude in his basement. Um, they good. really bring the product to life, you know, how it works, what's happening on the back end, you yeah. know, the point scanners, the 3D scans, they print the objects that they just scan. Right. Good and graphics. You can actually imagine how it's actually how how it's actually used, what it promises to do, and how people are uh, applying the technology to their everyday world. Now, when I say everyday world, I don't mean for most people. I don't think, I don't know if I could use it. Like, I'm intimidated. I, I feel like an idiot, basically, when I watch this video, because I see people scanning their earlobes, their, you know, their ear canal, uh, people scanning flowers to make jewelry. Like, I feel so dumb, and <laughs> these people are creative geniuses. They're like little, I, I picture Leonardo da Vinci's using this kind of thing, you know? Like, yeah, it's very, it's very niche. It's very specific, you know? So if you are a jewelry designer and you're thinking, how can I turn... Uh, my pinky toe into a ring. Now you can scan it. You know, scan it. How meta! It. You're 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 like taking uh, an image of the place where the ring will go to put on top of the ring. Uh -huh. You can cover your pinky toe with your pinky toe. Yeah. Um, or video game designers, you know, who want to add a character but don't want to spend time designing him on their computers. Maybe they can scan you. You know, and bring you into the game. Yeah. Yeah, the quality looked amazing. And, and from what I've seen, it, it sounds like a lot of people say that it's what we're seeing in this video is pretty accurate to what it actually does. 0 0.1 millimeter accuracy. Yeah, and I was comparing that with some other products uh, that are available right now. I mean, obviously the iPhone has a LiDAR scanner. Right. So that can measure distances and create 3D models. In comparison, this is much, much more accurate. You know, mm -hmm. you can't really tell uh, because both of them add textures to the objects that they're scanning. So say like your hair and stuff like that, the color of your skin, what you're wearing, both of them do that. And when you look at an iPhone scanned object... Wait, I'm sorry, it adds texture? Yeah, as in, so it's also recording the color and the texture of whatever object it's scanning. Uh huh. And then it adds that to the 3D model. Oh, you know, so okay. for example, right now this wall is pretty blank, right? You know, so you can't really tell. It would add but dots if, to this wall, or maybe like a shark skin, or something that was add had more of a three dimensional. If that's what the wall was made of, yeah. You know, so say like you have leather shoes, and leather has a pattern, so you're scanning the or shoe. It's slightly porous. You yeah. Know, like... Not only is it recording the three D points in space uh -huh. of that shoe, it's also recording the leather texture. Mm. to then map it onto the 3D object. Interesting. And so the iPhone scanner, it say if it recorded your hair or your face, you know, it maps the texture and it looks like a really good 3D model. But if you take away the texture, it's very, very basic. You know, mm. so it does everything, basically mapping, say, a picture of your ear onto the 3D model. But it hasn't actually recorded the 3D points in space of your ear, whereas this one does. Did you guys get that? Was that very confusing? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it is it is much more accurate than your iPhone lighters. Yeah, yeah, we saw. That. They have a video in here showing the difference. I think one of the guys who's reviewing the products on their own YouTube channel shows the difference between uh, the Revo Point Pop Two and the the uh, iPhone mm -hmm. lidar. World of difference. World of difference. But uh, he says that for the, the iPhone, you can still get away with scanning things, especially if you're an amateur or you're just doing it for fun. But if you want to take it to any kind of professional level or you want to make it actually kind of usable in your professional world, mm -hmm. you've got to get a product like the Revo Point. And again, I think it's built for tinkers, no? It's not meant to enter the factory floor of Mercedes or something like that. They have better 3D scanners, I imagine, industrial level 3D scanners. Right. But for the tinker, people who like Raspberry Pis, who like building their own stuff, people who are designing and printing 3D objects, definitely, this speeds up. Yeah, there's there's so many uses for this thing, and I can't think of one. <laughs> uh, it, it's not it's not made for me. Uh, it's also, but it does get me excited about what other people, designers, will create using this. You know, like I'm, I'm very excited. 
In terms of the page, uh, again, like the video, it's very high production, good quality. Yeah. You can tell there's some kind of marketing agency behind this one, uh, or at least there's a marketing person on the team. Right. And it I love how it more starts. Than... You know? Yeah, it's go a ahead. pop, pop two. How do they start? What's popping? What's popping? <laughs> Popcorn. Hey, go up a, can you go up a little bit? Let's see. Did you notice that their their goal? I mean, this is an incredible product, but they only want just shy of ten thousand dollars, which seems very low compared to a lot of other campaigns that are promising a lot less technology. Yeah. Um, well, at ten thousand dollars, how much are they a pop? How much are they a pop? Uh, I think it's just shy of five hundred. Okay, five hundred. So how many is that? Twenty. They were planning on producing twenty pop twos. Yeah. That was their goal. Okay. And now they're going to produce a gajillion times that. 2, a lot. 000. Yeah, yeah. One million, one hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean, much. some campaigners will set their goals low. And this is that little psychological trick of uh, you feel more comfortable backing a project that has already hit its goal. So you know it's going to get made mm. compared to zero people have backed this project. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Um, but it'll be a pretty sad day when someone hits their goal and just raises like 15,000 and now they have to produce 22 Revo points. And they're like, oh, I had pictured a scale that small. Oh, right, right. Yeah, they don't go enough over. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, so what is it? It's a 2-in-1 3D scanner. It's a better color effect, so I guess that's that center camera is recording. So what is a 3D scanner? If we break it down very simply, it has two cameras on the sides, like eyes, you know, so it's measuring the distance between these two objects. Uh -huh. And then I'm guessing the center camera records the colors and the textures and things like that. I think that's nuts that it can record colors. Wasn't well, that what a regular camera does? I guess it is, but I, it just, I, yeah, it just blows my mind. Colors would be doing that for like a hundred years. No? Yeah. But the 3D points in space, I think that was the hardest thing. Although, did you know that the Nazis had a 3D stereoscopic camera? Like, they'd actually come up with a system of two cameras recording two different images. Uh -huh. And they made 3D-style movies mm. way back 80 years ago. Is that like the kind of movies that I would watch as a kid with the red blue and the blue lenses? No, no, no. no? The actual two images. Oh. They didn't quite know how to use it or what its application would be, but I think there are a few Nazi 3D, 3D movies. Huh. Awesome. <laughs> uh, but, but what I wanted to say, because when they show in the video, when they're scanning, the, the initial, like, 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 let's take the car hood in the video. It was just painting. You like, it was like you're painting over it, right? And it's just blue. And it's just showing these points that it kind of takes. And then afterwards, it showed like it showed color, which is why, I, I don't know why, I thought adding color to something seemed more revolutionary than scanning it itself. But it sounds like it's fairly easy. I think the idea is it's doing both at the same time. But it's on painting computer, it on later, I assume. You know, like it's it's all done in software. No, no, no. Uh, so the blue and the green that it's showing you yeah. is so that you can fill in the gaps. You know, sure. so it's showing you the 3D map, like what you've missed. Because picture, say like I record this computer. If I'm just doing this side, obviously it won't record the sides and things like that. So I'll just have this, whatever the camera is seeing. Yeah. So that way it's letting you know like, oh, you haven't painted this side yet. Right. But right. it's also recording the color at the same time. And once you're done and you save the model, then it just adds whatever it already had recorded. Mm, whatever it recorded with that center while it was uh, picking everything exactly. up, it then paints it on top of the actual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But compared to other 3D scanners that I've seen, you know, and I think this is a trend in most products, especially in this 3D, VR, 3D printing, all of these things start huge, you know? The first 3D printers were massive, and little by little, they scaled them down into something that you could put on your desk. Same thing with this. 3D scanners were huge boxes that you had to put your object into, and your object had to be small enough to fit into that 3D scanner, and then it would spin on a turntable, record it. This is something, yeah, exactly. Like you said, paintbrush. You know, you can just walk around with this. It also comes with a turntable if you want to do that. And you can plug it in and it knows the distance between it and the turntable, the speed it's spinning at, so you can record objects like that. I'm extremely immature, but every time I hear a turntable, I just think of Teacher. two turntables and a microphone. <laughs> On the ones and twos, we got this guy scanning his product. 
Well, that's what you'd be doing with it. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Pick up the Rubo points. <laughs> <sing> <laughs> <it too>. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep scanning the inside of my mouth. <laughs> well, it has fluent scanning, so. So it knows what I'm saying. Is exactly. That... <laughs> um, Professional grade quality. That's a, I feel like that's one of those terms that no one really knows. This can't be defined. What is a professional grade anything? Professionals use it. I guess if you're getting paid for it. If somebody's like a jewelry designer and they can use it, yeah. it's already professional, professional grade. grade. All right. It doesn't mean it's going to get you to space or something like that. It's not what NASA's using, but there is some professional somewhere who is getting paid to use it. Um, but yeah, it, it has these objects, gifts of like scans that, it, that it's had on the page. You know what I also really loved? I'm going to scroll way down now, uh, way down at the bottom of the page. If I had put this campaign page together, I would have brought this way up to the top. But I found it really interesting that they have, damn, this isn't on the page, that they have models from the community, you know? And this, to me, is the perfect um, argument that this actually works. Yeah, proof that it works. So. Proof. Yeah, exactly. No, it's not going to work. 3D it's a, model scanned by... There we go. Here. Check this out. This is... the uploaded scans that they did with this object. Yeah. And which, when I was looking through this, there's some, like, lots of Asian faces here. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I guess that's what they had around the office. But something I found really funny is this... And unicorns. Unicorn. <laughs> so how are they scanning unicorns? Someone got a hold of a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> In mid-stride, it looks yeah. like. And they just had this floating around and we're like, oh, let's go scan that unicorn that always comes and bugs us at our office. <laughs> it's so tiny. <laughs> Is it tiny? That that would explain a lot, actually, if unicorns were actually just tiny mythical. Not mythical, of course, they're real, but like tiny little creatures. That's why and that's why we're not seeing them. Yeah. yeah. They're just minuscule. Dinosaurs. Yeah. Yeah, they've been scanning dinosaurs and angels as well. And people who need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it, yeah. Patiently waiting in line or going to the toilet. This face is a little creepy. Jeez. I mean, it's amazing how it's able to do real life faces. This guy, he looks like he accidentally <laughs> scanned his face. Like, ah! This, this is the guy after uh, he got into the toilet. That seems like an upgrade to the Star Wars when Han Solo gets put into that, that metallic stuff to get transported from Jabba the Hutt's place. But I mean, come on, look at the detail on that. That is, that's crazy. Yeah, that is, that is amazing. Like, you can turn yourself into a video game character. Mm -hmm. uh, just look, look, you can see the pockmarks on his face. But you're saying that's texture added later. It could be texture. I wonder if you can turn that layer off. No, that's that's awesome. I, I, I love the quality and the attention to detail. I mean, it, it, like you said, it basically, whenever I see one of these images, I just picture a video game. Let's let's not, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that, that's there. What is that? What did you just click? Why did it turn metallic all of a sudden? <laughs> By the way, this is going to be a real shit show for the for the guy in the editing room <laughs> yeah, trying to find I'm out what it is that Dan is doing. tinkering around with for the next five minutes. Okay, uh, I'll help him out with that. Uh, back to the page. Back to the page. Um, what stood out to you about this campaign? Uh, that video. Stop. Go back down a little bit. I love this guy right here. This This first video of someone reviewing it on their own YouTube channel. Again, he goes to a He-Man character. I don't know what it is about the popularity of He-Man characters, but he's got Skeletor up on his, uh, on his, on his thumbnail, and it looks like it's Stephen King is reviewing 3D printers. <laughs> like what? <laughs> That's totally. Can you, uh, please, uh, editor, put up a picture of Stephen King and tell me this is not Stephen King reviewing the Revo Point Pop Two 3D scanner first look. This is what Stephen King is doing when he's not writing. Two or three books a year. Yeah. I guess this is how he comes up with his characters. You know, he plays around with them a little bit and he's like, oh, yes, yes, there you go. That's a scary story. <laughs> that is scary. Well, the faces that we saw in the previous examples were pretty scary. Yeah, but there's a lot of reviews. Uh, that's something that doesn't happen often enough, I think, on crowdfunding. There are a lot of people who crowdfunders will send their products out to. Yeah. For some reason, they don't add those reviews to the page. And it's very interesting to see impartial people who are into this niche up on the campaign page. Mm -hmm. um, you think it, it, it helps that this is the second iteration that they have a, they have the first one, they have a backing with that, a following with that product. And then now they have a, a more upgraded version mm -hmm. of that. 
So they already have the credibility, the proof, the views. Yeah, they, to well, the credibility and proof, but also a following. People who are already using their product in, in a practical way for them, practical. One of the questions I think asked, well, we'll get to the questions at the end, actually. We'll, we'll address that. Okay, and they have reviews in every language, yeah. German, Spanish. Because uh, right. this is every nerd's, I'm sure there's a whole world of nerds that just love it. Uh, I mean, amazing nerds, designers that are just, think this product is incredible. I think it's incredible. I just have no idea how to use it. I, I feel like it's an awesome little like gadget to have. And Revo Point, if you guys are watching this, please send us one to review as well. Because I think we'd have so much fun just filming shit around the office. You know, film you, film me. Uh, and just create 3D models. I don't know what we're going to use them for. That's, a, that's, I, that's a exactly. Thing, yeah. I don't see the next step. Yeah. But I feel like it'd be pretty fun to just scan ourselves. You know There's what? I, a digital it, it's myself. a good point. You know what? I would like it. I would like it to be similar to YouTube videos, where we just sit here and record and talk and chit chat and review and do all those kind of things, and then we just pass it off to someone. I, I want to just give that give, it, give that to the editor. He'll come up with the magic. You yeah, know, yeah, he'll make it into right. something. So we'll just go around scanning shit all the time. You know, <laughs> yeah, the and then we'll just give it to artist. someone else. Yeah, there's a three D guy out there. He's gonna make something creative out of it. What makes Pop Two outstanding? So they break down a lot of the technology behind it. And I think there's a few different uh, ways to 3D scan from what I was reading. There's a LiDAR, there's this light structure. These guys took it a step further with this binocular microstructured light. So I hadn't seen this binocular term used by others. And I guess that's what enables the 0.1 millimeter accuracy. Because a lot of the competitors, especially at this price point of about $400, they have... Like, I think the best accuracy was half a millimeter. And these guys are doing it at a tenth of a millimeter. This is where we start getting into terms which I have no idea what they are. If you don't mind going up a little bit. Um, ensures that the... Let me... I, I have them written down here somewhere else. Ensures that the fast acquired 3D point cloud data has high accuracy. Yeah. 0.1 millimeter accuracy and a bunch of other things I didn't understand. We have the high resolution global exposure sensor. The depth camera by hardware triggering, the embedded 6D OF gyroscope, and a 3D point cloud data of 0 0.15 millimeters. Okay, uh, that kind of sounds like uh, tests that Indiana Jones has to, or Ian Foster has to overcome. But let's break them down one by one. Um, what was the first one on the list? High resolution global exposure sensor. No clue. Yeah, I don't have a clue with any of these. That's the, that's the point. Depth camera by hardware triggering. Depth camera by hardware triggering. No clue. <laughs> Embedded 6 capital D small O F space gyroscope. DOF, I did know that. What is that? Depth, Depth of, of field. field? Depth yeah, of yeah, field. yeah. What is the 6 DOF? 6 DOF gyroscope. <laughs> <laughs> no. And and a 3D point cloud data of 0 0.15 millimeters. That I do understand. Well, of so, course. <laughs> of course. Tell us about it. We have it. to have one, one, at least one of them. Uh, the 3D point cloud. So when you're creating 3D models on a computer, no? But most of them are based on polygons and... Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I have no clue. I'm trying I'm trying to pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Uh, we can have like, a whole other show of just pseudoscience. <laughs> just just the explanation just of like things. Just like, yeah, coming things. out with the... Say it with authority and yeah. with conviction and everyone's going to believe you. That it's all about polygons and space, you know? like. <laughs> well, no, because this is one of the first qualms I had about 3D scanners, you know? Because they're actually... Scanners. I like how you're talking you're like as if it's something that you thought about a lot. Yeah, one of the yeah. first qualms I had, you know? <laughs> no, like, definitely. It's something that keeps you up at night, you know? Like, this is one of those things I've been on Reddit <laughs> complaining to people about for a long time. No, okay, maybe not to that extreme. But when I thought of 3D scanners and when I saw 3D scanners, what they're doing is recording actual points in space. So that's the 3D point cloud. No, it's creating a cloud of these are all the specific points that I've mapped. Maybe yeah. can I think of it as an X, Y, Z axis? Yeah, so you have, uh, that's our space. And so those points exist not on a two-dimensional plane, but rather on a three-dimensional one. Exactly. But they're points. Whereas 3D modeling is usually done with shapes. No? Am I right? Yeah. So you, you have polygons, triangles, and things like that, but it's shapes, and it kind of wraps around this 3D object. Can, can I ask, is that just points with lines connected between them? Yeah. 
Potentially. Yeah. So when I'm watching these videos and it's showing these points that are being recorded, there's yeah. all these gaps, no? Because it's hard, impossible. It's 0.1 millimeter accuracy. So between those 0.1 millimeters are spaces, no? The, the, yeah, okay. Yeah. Whereas on the computer, there's no space because these <laughs> shapes are wrapped around the object, yeah? So I wonder how these points convert. <laughs> this is great TV, huh? How these points convert over to shapes. Yeah, if anybody knows, please let us know in the comments. <laughs> okay. And for how, how much does it cost? About $420 for the cheapest version. But is it competitive with other... Yes, it is. Standards? And that's what we were saying, that the other ones are 0 0.5 millimeters accuracy for the same price. Mm -hmm. And so this quartz price is pretty good. The fact that they've delivered a previous campaign is a good sign. Like yeah. they can do this. It's yeah, not yeah. just a dream. Although reading through the comments of the previous campaign, <laughs> most of the reviews seem positive. Most people have received. Um, Stephen King positive. got his. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they're happy with it, except for Apple iPhone users. Mm. Apparently, there was a as part of the reward, they were going to get a cable so you can plug it into your iPhone and just record with the pop and your phone. You don't need a computer. You don't need anything else. That cable wasn't provided and still hasn't been made. So mm -hmm. like six months later. Yeah. And Apple people are freaking out about this on the pop. They're like, how it's, you guys are fake. This is a scam. Don't back them. They've received the actual product. They have the product in their yeah. hands. They just don't have that they USB use cable. It. Right. And they can't use it. Yeah. I, I, guess. I saw that in the, in the comments and, and someone was like, how dare you guys come up with your second iteration before delivering the cable for the first one? Yeah. To which I think they said we're working on it. Yeah, they're working on it, and there's other solutions. They keep providing. They say you can connect it via Wi-Fi. What do you feel like computer. when you when you hear someone say we're working on it? Does that mean like go fuck yourself? <laughs> too too bad, buddy. <laughs> That's one of those generic things that I always hear that I always get the answer to when someone doesn't have an answer. Mm -hmm. We're working on it. Patience. Thank you for letting us know. Yeah. Or it's our policy. Anything that starts with policy, I always think, oh shit, here comes some bad news. Um, there's also a, a, a power bank built into this thing I oh yeah that was interesting yeah 5,000 uh, milliamp hours so it, it doesn't it's, it, I'm guessing it doesn't drain the battery of the cam of the smartphone or wherever you have it put into but it's got its own power system okay I didn't see that but that means that they have gone through the reviews of people who received the first one because that was a big complaint people were complaining that they hadn't received their iPhone cable but Android users were commenting under those comments and saying, guys, don't worry about that cable because I plugged it into my Android phone and it drained the battery <laughs> yeah. in three seconds. Or yeah. Something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like to think because what they wrote there is they said uh, it scanned for a long time because it has the power bank. Mm -hmm. And I'm imagining, what are these people scanning? Like a whole house? You know, like what is it they're scanning that's going to take that much time? Or maybe they're just going through the museum, which we saw in there. Um, someone was uh, scanning the, I don't know, whatever that famous... Famous Greek statue without the arms is the woman without the arms. Aren't Venus. All, don't all of them not have arms? Yeah, I don't know. Arms were very delicate back then. Or no one had arms. They just didn't evolve to arms yet. <laughs> but there was, uh, yeah, I can imagine someone scanning the entire museum. <laughs> and that's why he needs a power bank. Uh, fun fact. You know those statues used to be in color? I think. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They used to be in color, and it's just the color is worn off. And now they're all white. But you kind of think Roman and Greek statues, you think be only white, white plaster? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because when I think of Greece, I think of blue and white, right? Like they, they're all those houses along the well, the, the flag, but also all those houses along the coast. Those famous images mm -hmm. of white and stuck up, yeah, yeah, and then blue ocean, blue paint. Well, let's. Uh, I mean, do Can we have anything else? The updates in the comments. Actually, I think the power bank comes with the premium. Package. Oh yeah, yeah. Good point. The producer says the 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 power bank is with the premium one. So you, there's different, you can get just the, the scanner, but also looks if there's a premium deal that has more cables, the power bank, as well as the turntable and a carrying case. Mm -hmm. For 480 bucks. Yeah, not that much more. Um, the prices are in Hong Kong dollars, which always makes converting com confusing, but you do get the dollar amount of it. I like this though, medical applications. Can you imagine going to the dentist and him be, <laughs> being like, wait, just let me get this thing I got off of Kickstarter <laughs> to, scan, yeah. <laughs> just to scan your teeth. I'll be back in a back in a minute with your new. Um, 
I feel like depending on what country you're in, that could be totally normal. <laughs> but also that same guy doesn't know how to operate it. You'd have to tell them how to turn it on. That was the only thing that stood out to me, to be honest. Uh, all the other stuff, yeah. Make rings, make headphones. I feel like this would be a really cool thing, you know? Uh, a headphone unique to yourself. And if you have this, it would make for great gifts to your friends. <laughs> but I don't know how you can surprise them with it, you know? Just stand still and close your eyes oh, while I record your yeah, ear. Yeah. Uh, you have to creep in while they're sleeping, I guess, which would be even worse, you know? Like, come over to my house. Here, take this sedative, you know? Like, <laughs> just relax. Back what's, massages, turn on the incense. What's that endoscope camera doing? The spy cam? Yeah. <laughs> Put that away. No, so it's a center camera. Anything. It's a center cam. Don't think of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these guys have that Chinese factory vibe to them. No. Yeah, yeah, they do. Besides the Hong Kong dollars, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of amazing, great campaigns that are being delivered from Hong Kong, from China. It's just something about these people in Corona outfits. Mm. You no, know? scary. So, so let's have a look at the frequently asked questions. Huh? So let's have, yeah, let's do it. Uh, one of the things that I, I noticed in there is that a lot of people were asking about the color black. I didn't know this was an issue, but I guess with scanning, black. And is not reflective. reflective surfaces. Yeah, yeah. So they were they were asking, can you scan black? And they said, yes, you can, but it's not going to turn out as nice and as well as highly reflective surfaces. Which I like that they're straightforward about that. Um, and it makes sense, no? Uh, I imagine the way it's scanning is using shadows, you know? So very flat surface or very black, you know, with no shadows or a reflective surface that is actually showing you not the object, but what's what is reflecting yeah. must be very hard for the computer to understand. Yeah. But they don't mention flat surfaces. Flat, light-wise, I mean. Light-wise? Yeah. I see. So like this table that's pretty matte, I uh -huh. imagine if you just started recording it like this, it might not be able to figure out that it's... Just a flat a table. table. You might think you're just pointing it up at the clouds or something. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. And um, speaking of, that's the second thing, is that people were asking, uh, can I use it outside? To which they say, of course you can, but just don't point it directly at the sun. Okay. Just yeah, like a pair of does. eyeballs. <laughs> don't look directly at the sun. And I think it has a problem with too much light, no? So there is some kind of hood or something that you can get so mm -hmm. that uh, it reduces the amount of light. Yeah. This was also the first instance that I got that English isn't their first language. Oh, yeah. And uh, this is a little trick for you backers looking, for, looking through campaigns. A lot of times... Campaign pages will be edited by an English speaking person. Mm -hmm. So you read through it and it all makes perfect sense. It's all written perfectly. But the FAQs get updated throughout the campaign. Sure. Yeah. So the creator comes and adds questions that people are asking. And so now read a couple of these questions. Um, can the POP2 scan black objects? Can the scan model directly print it? Can the scan model modified with the design software? <laughs> Not quite there. No. But the honesty is there, you know, and they're really like I think giving giving their everything. Does that ever turn? Does that ever make you think? Oh, I don't want to back this. These guys have poor grammar. Do you, you ever think like mm, shady? I don't. I don't like the the absence of the the or a an article. No article. No backing. <laughs> you know, like do you ever get that feeling? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. and. It's because there have been a bunch of scam campaigns coming out of Asia that it's sometimes hard to hard to trust and hard to fully trust them. But that's why you have to go one level deeper and analyze the rest of their campaign materials to see are these real people, are they really standing behind what they're doing? And I think the previous campaign and all the comments we're receiving there, that's enough proof. I agree. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I hear that this is the second iteration and people are still backing, it sounds like it's gonna it, I mean they're gonna deliver. Yeah. Uh, some other interesting questions that stood out to me is the uh, requirements on your end. You know, so you can plug it into your computer. Does it need to be an ultra high end three D computer? Um, so yeah, what are the requirements that you need on your end? Uh, because you can plug it into your PC or Mac. Do you need a super high end three D modeling computer? No, you don't. You can do it with a cheap laptop like this one. Is that right? Yeah, because everything is built into the camera itself. Wow, it's doing processing all the processing stuff. there. But then you need to have some, well, okay. If but you then you want to have some models. kind of software that'd be able to edit it, yeah, right? Exactly. Like, Unless you're printing it directly, which you can do as well. I really like that. You don't need a powerful computer if you just want to 3D print 3D whatever print. you're scanning. What would it look like if I 3D printed me? 
full size, no? Or I or small size. White. Could I do that? <laughs> yeah, why not? What would I look That's like? That's what I'm saying. Let's get one, you know? I feel like this would be awesome to play around with. Have miniature versions of ourselves for whenever we don't want to show up in this tech I want review. Yeah. We can just have them there. And no one would know the difference, places. right? <laughs> it's so lifelike. <laughs> we don't even need to print it. We just have it on the computer screen. Did you ever play Warhammer? No, but I know what it is. Uh, similar things? No? G.I. Joe's. I never played board games no, that had little figures like that. Because one of the things that was really fun about that was just creating these landscapes, you know? So... Less less so than the actual battles and the wars. We get we get together and play those from time to time. But just having these little figurines that you really had to mm, focus and paint in so much detail. That I think that was one of the frequently or one of the comments that came up quite often is how small of an object can you can you uh, uh, record? Can you? And it was two, two by two centimeters? Something or? like that. Shoot, I don't remember exactly what it was. But it was oh, clear that people's intentions were that they wanted to do little figurines, specifically, I'm guessing, Warhammer and, and little characters like that. Which, they were expensive. So imagine if you oh, could yeah. just print your own, you know? And sell them at school. If you're a kid, if you're an entrepreneurial little kid, buy one of these cameras and start printing Warhammer. I don't even know. Do people still play that? I think they Let do. Let us know in the comments. But I don't think they're kids. Warhammer? They're old. <laughs> They're all adults with long hair <laughs> living in the basement of their mom's house. No, they're not. They're actually yeah. normally functioning adults. Who watch Tech I Want? Yeah. Perhaps. You know what was interesting? If we go into the comments, the thing that blew me away the most was actually how many questions were asked about um, taxes. It wasn't about the product itself. It was more about taxes. Do I have to pay taxes on this thing? Can we bring it into Europe? You know, like... I, I didn't understand uh, what the problem was and why it seems to be a unique problem with this product. Yeah, you don't really get that very often. And what do these guys have to do with taxes? I don't understand, you know? Like, wouldn't that be taken care of on a different level? Or is it the campaigner that takes care of your, your tax problems? Ah, was it a price point thing? It was above a certain dollar amount, so they had to pay taxes? Mm -hmm. Am I answering my own questions? I don't know. I don't know the answers to these things. I just thought it was interesting. I think uh, it's up to the campaigners, no? They can include the taxes and they pay for the taxes when they ship it uh -huh. or they can uh, ship the taxes. Ah, okay, which is why I'm guessing so many people were asking. Because maybe it wasn't clear on their campaign page, but I saw that in the frequently asked questions, they did have, so they might have added that after all of the comments. Are the taxes included on the price? The taxes are not included on the price. Ah, so that's where people are getting confused. Mm -hmm. Because I guess different countries have different taxes, and it's just too confusing for small creators. I totally understand. Uh, it's so much easier for them to give you the discounted price and for you just to figure it out and pay your own taxes. It looks like it's uh, it's compatible with a lot of the different 3D modeling softwares. Um, Geomagic, Fusion 360, Rhino. I thought it was Rhino. ZBrush. Could it be a uh, typo, or is it Rhino? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a typo. Uh, yeah, I saw AutoCAD, all of those on there as well. I backed on Fixstarter. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's even scarier is that that same person, this is uh, Alistair Craig. I have backed on Fixstarter for $3,500 HD dollars. Um, I uh, operate... Uh, Hong Dong. Hong Dong dollars. <laughs> what's even scarier is what's next. I operate in the UK aerospace seating market. You know, like uh, this guy's in charge of aerospace, you know, like I, I'm very... Very afraid of whatever he's doing. What is the possibility to obtain the upgraded scanner for early evaluation? Thank you, Alistair Craig. Um, thank you for showing interest, they say. Uh, you need to back the project to get the Pop2 3D scanner. They basically say, go buy one. That's how you get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I like this. Uh, is this a fancy way of saying he seats people on planes? He's an air steward? Right. I'm in, aerospace I'm in the aerospace seating market. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your seat, sir. Is that travel agent? He just he just <laughs> buys tickets for people, or yeah, or uh, or what do they call the people on the on the airplanes? Air stewards. Yeah, an air steward or stewardess. I guess. Alice. Alistair. Alistair. Yeah. Alice steward. Ali Stair. <laughs> Ali. Good. Who knows? Who knows? There's a big mystery here that we're not going to get to the bottom. If you of. are Alistair Craig, please comment below and let us know what exactly it is that you do in the aerospace seat market. And tell us how to get onto Fixstarter. <laughs> <laughs> what, other, what else can we find there? So, so in the end, that was the Revo Point Two uh, pop pops. Yeah, Pop Two. Thank you, Pop Two Scanner. Um, 
again, an incredible product, a lot of technology there, which I have no idea what it is, but seeing the results and seeing what other people are doing with it excites me very much. I, I don't think I'll be hold, getting this, but if I had a designer in the family, this would be an awesome gift. Yeah, and at its price point of four four hundred and twenty dollars, I think it's really affordable compared to the competition. I'm surprised it's actually so cheap for what it's capable of, yeah. at least in terms of what the videos are showing us. I don't think I have any uses for it professionally or even amateur. I don't know exactly what I'd use it for. If we got this with a three D printer, though, I think it could be really fun to play around with. Yeah, just scan things, scan random things, and. Print them out. Why yeah. not have a shelf of things that would print it? Yeah. Of our face. You could scan nuts and print them. Uh, just like different kinds of nuts. And, and uh, nuts? No, 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 no. <laughs> like, uh, you know, screws, oh. bolts and nuts. Oh, okay. I, I went people's food. Screws were the last one. I yeah, thought. come on. Let's be practical here. Well, food, you could trick people. You could be like, want a peanut? <laughs> yeah. Anybody want a peanut? <laughs> That's <last thing. laughs> So, yeah, that was... Revo Point, Revo Point. This was Tech I Want. I'm Dan. And I'm Rafi. If you liked this new format, please let us know. Give us a little comment. What you thought of Revo Point, what you thought of this episode. And if this is your first time here, please, you know, subscribe. We try to make awesome content like this as often as we can. And we'd love to see you back here again. Yeah. Until next time, we're out. <laughs>